prepare the Bacchus. <laughs> Hello boys and girls, I'm Nick in the States, and I want to take you back to the Bacchus. No, in fact, I want to take you back three, four, five, six, seven years ago, uh, as I sat dreaming, and I sat on Santa's lap creepily, and I said, Santa, all I want in the world is a Gibson Les Paul double cutaway that's set up like a Les Paul custom black beauty. And Santa said, get real boy, get off my lap. So I decided to go other routes. I almost went to the Far East and had uh, those people that make questionable copies of Les Paul make me one, but I figured the 14 different things I needed done customized would result in just horrendous breakdown in communication and perhaps not exactly what I wanted. Um, but behold, years later, when browsing that thing called the interwebs, I uh, came across Edwards of all people. Edwards! Um, of all people, and they had a... Uh, something like K125, which was a Les Paul double cutaway shape, like, you know, um, with F-holes, some of them had F-holes, some of them had block inlays, and they were all $1,000 or more, and I was like, wow, okay, well, now at least I know somebody makes one. That's really cool. Um, and then, another day, while browsing the interwebs, the magical robot that make up Reverb presented a picture of this when I logged in to try and sell something. And ironically, the thing that I logged in to sell sold quickly, and I had more money than this was costing. So I bought it. What's the Bacchus, you say? Ooh, if you have to ask, you should be forewarned. It's kind of a weird tale. Bacchus is another Japanese brand. They sell a lot of high-end, less polished things and other stuff in Japan. Um, but then they also have, I think it's called Global Series, which are made in China, um, like this one here, that are much more affordable. When I found listings for this used in Japan, they tend to go for about $450, $500 in that range. There are very few of them. It's hard to get information on these um, because everything's in Japanese and they were limited models, so they didn't sell a ton. Um, if you're into these, also look for the 77 Guitars Albatross and the aforementioned uh, Edwards, I think it's a K125, um, because they're also this shape but in, done up in different really cool, neat ways. Um, this guy, though, is a very interesting thing. So it's a flat top. Hello, I'm flat. Um, two humbucker zebras. They've got some balls to them. Uh, two volume, so neck volume, bridge volume. Three-way selector, master tone control. Plenty of fingerprints. Block inlays on a rosewood neck. Kind of a unique take on the Gibson Diamond with just enough there not to get sued. Somebody took a bite out of your headstock right there. Um, five fly binding through single ply neck. Um, but, and then gold no-name tuners that look a whole lot like Grover's without Grover's written upon them. And uh, USA style bridge. And I will say I've had the truss rod cover off on this. You'll notice it screws in like a Gibson with just one screw at the bottom and one screw at the top, making it look like it's a USA or a Japanese thing. And it has a Gibson style truss rod, which is interesting because I'm not very good at, I've, I've never gotten good at using the Gibson one. so. To do a setup, I'd have to probably I would bring this to the shop. But if you look at it, the thing is just cool. It looks like a guitar you'd play out on formal night. If formal night also involved, you know, putting your fingers up in the metal sign and rocking out to some David Lee Roth or something. I just think it's a it's a very neat, fun guitar, and it uh it has a, a not a fatal flaw. It has just some minor flaws in that. I fell in love with the Gibson Les Paul double cutaway shape when I bought <clears throat> these guitars, which are Michael Kelly Hourglass Double Cut. Same shape, right? This is a full-size, big body, awesome thing. And when you put it next to this guy, this little guy looks a little bit tiny, right? Because it is. Michael Kelly decided to take the double cut shape, and instead of just copying like everybody's done forever, they made it the whole lower bout bigger. So it's actually got another inch or so of wood, two inches of wood almost, after the bridge. Meaning that it, it's just, it's a bigger guitar. This is kind of a, this, this, I can do it guys. Um, this is kind of a smallerish shape. Uh, great if you're a smaller dude or a lady or whatever, or if you're just comfortable in your manhood enough to not play the largest guitar, which I, uh, I'm trying to come to the realization that I am. 
So, and it's, um, I can't tell the wood. It's actually got a nice bit of heft to it. It's a full two inch thick body. Um, but it's not super heavy and you can kind of see how the wood is aged through the finish. Um, you can just see like grain, I guess, but not transparent, just the imperfection. I don't know. There's wood in it. I know that there's wood. I'm thinking it's a mahogany body, mahogany neck. So clean, you get an idea, like... I really like the pickups. Um, they when I got this guitar, I was playing a lot. I think the Greco. And the Greco has nice mellow pickups. You kind of push the amp a little bit more to get them to be a little more less poly and whatever. And then I plugged this in and I was like, ah, geez Louise. Um, they're similar output to the Dean Cadillac I did a little while ago. Um, nice, big, round, without being shrill, without being ice picky. Um, I really have no clue about any details in the pickups because I can't read Japanese at all. Like, not even a little bit. Like, not a clue. It, yeah, nothing. So, anyway. Um, really great guitar. Cool thing about these are, um, Bacchus really aren't followed much in the States. Um, and these fact that this was made in China brings its value down that you can get, I got this one for under 300 bucks, uh, I think to my door. Um, so it was worthwhile to investigate and because it's all I had been asking for for Christmas for a long time, it, um, it works out, worked out pretty well. And this is in nice shape, not perfect shape, but pretty nice. <laughs> Tell, like from one person's recording rig videos amp setup like that what it sounds like I would say that this is probably like it's a little SG ish but a little bit more uh, mass to it volume to it I guess like body um, from how she plays and it's it's pretty sweet um... <laughs> Quarter-inch scale on this guy. Um, yeah, overall, it's it's a cool little ride, and like the Edwidge, which has some Chinese in its heritage, it gives me faith in you know the quality of stuff that can come out of a, a higher-end brand in China. Um, the paint masking is spotless. Um, overall, the construction is really great. I have no clue what the nut is made out of. It looks like it could be bone, though. Um, so yeah. 
it's it's a good fun little guitar. Check these out though. And keep an eye out for Bacchus's. Um, you, you might find a, a pretty good deal there. So as always, I've been Nick in the States. Obviously, I have issues. Thanks for coming by. Talk to you again soon. Like, subscribe, comment, all that fun jazz. Take care.